We wish to acknowledge the past guardians of the land in which our community has been built. We are honored to be gathering on the land of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. We pay respect to elders past, present, and future. We recognize the first Australians who are with us today. We acknowledge and respect their continuing culture and the contributions that they make to our city and our nation. We pause to consider that the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples of Australia are the oldest continuous cultures on Earth, with a heritage spanning well over 60,000 years. We are from the Catholic Ladies College by Carrier Group. We are a small group, but we are a powerful force for change. Today, we hold our school's message sticks in our hands. In Aboriginal culture, message sticks were used as a means of communicating with other groups. Today, message sticks are used as a powerful symbol to show the willingness of people to come together. At CLC, we believe that our message stick will continue to touch the hearts of those who see it, and that it is an authentic, important school icon, one which symbolises the important steps forward which we take in our journey towards reconciliation. Today marks the beginning of National Reconciliation Week. Each year, National Reconciliation Week begins on the anniversary of the 1957 referendum. On 27th May, it concludes on the anniversary of 1992 Marlowe Court ruling on 3rd of June. Reconciliation Week is a particularly significant time in our lives. During this week, we celebrate and raise awareness of our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, history, culture and achievements. This year's National Reconciliation Week theme is more than a word, reconciliation takes action. This year, we are urged to take past conversations and move them to the next level, taking past words and showing them in action in support of Australia's First Nation people. Over the past year, many of us have taken a stand for Black Lives Matter and on deaths in custody, against the destruction of sacred sites such as Dukeron Woods and the Jabberong Trees, and other critical First Nations social justice issues. When Rio Tinto blew up the inland cage at Dukong Gorge, which had shown continuous human occupation for over 46,000 years, we stood in complete solidarity with the traditional owners who spoke of the absolute hell and desperation they went through in trying to stop the destruction of their sacred site and their ongoing devastation about the glass as it went to bed. Late last year, when the Directions Tree was felled by the Victorian Government, Sissy Austin said, I can feel the chainsaws tearing through my heart, my spirit, my Jamarong body is in pain. Today, I laid on the floor and cried. I cried for our mother, Jamarong country. We feel indescribable pain for the families and community members of the 476 Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who have died in custody and for the since the Royal Commission was handed down in 1991. Seven more people have died in the past two months. When George Floyd gasped for breath and stated that he couldn't breathe, we pictured David Dungai Jr. who died in Sydney's Long Bay Jail after guards rushed his cell to stop him eating biscuits. Before he died, David said 12 times that he could not breathe. We thought of Auntie Tanya Day, a proud Georgie Yorta, Wemba Wemba and Barapa Barapa woman who died from injuries sustained in police custody in 2017 after being arrested for public drunkenness, the same offence for which her uncle Harrison was arrested when he died in police cell in 1982. We thought of so many more. When we speak of black privilege, it does not mean that non-Indigenous people's lives are not hard. It means that our cultural background and ethnicity are not an obstacle in our lives. Today is a day to celebrate Aboriginal people's survival. In the face of, face of adversity, First Nations people demonstrate bravery and tenacity. Many continue to find their way home and stand strong in their culture. Many stand up time and time again against injustice that permeates our society. 
In Victoria, we prepare for the Euro Justice Commission. This will be our nation's first first truth telling process. Euro is the Wamba 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 Web for Truth. Euro will investigate both historical and ongoing injustices committed against Aboriginal Victorians through colonisation across all areas of social, political and economic life. We welcome this significant historical process but, but recognise that there will be much pain and intergenerational trauma which will come out in this truth telling. We promise to stand in solidarity with the First Nations people of this place and continue to consider ways that we can take action to further reconciliation in this community and beyond. As we view all of us need to make a commitment to address historic wrongs and ongoing justices in the past. Today, the CLC Fire Codes ask each person here, how are you going to take reconciliation to the next level, both as an individual and as a member of this community? Former Prime Minister Kevin Rudd said over 10 years ago, the time has now come for the nation to turn a page in Australia's history by righting the wrongs of the past and so moving forward with confidence to the future. We look, we look to a future where we embrace the possibility of new solutions to endure, endure problems where old approaches have failed. In our fire carrier group, we will continue to act and work towards improving the relationship and respect between the wider Australian community and the First Nations people. We finish our speech today by reading the fire carrier prayer. May the fire be in your thoughts, making them good and just. May it protect you from all harm. May the fire be in your eyes. May it open your eyes to see what is good in life. May it protect you from speaking against another. May the fire be in your ears. We pray that you may hear with deep listening, so that you may hear the flow of water and of all creation and the dreaming. May you be protected from gossip and from those things that harm and break down your family. May the fire be in your arms and hands, so that you may be of service and build up love. May the fire protect you from all violence. May the fire be in your whole being, in your legs and feet, enabling you to walk the earth with respect and care, so that you may journey in ways of goodness and trust, and be protected from walking from, away from what is true. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia and Georgia. I now want to introduce Jane Oakton, the president of the Nilambic Reconciliation Group. Thank you. I'll begin this short address today with my acknowledgement of the Wurundjeri, first peoples of the Yarra Valley of this land that we non-Indigenous people now occupy. I give my deep respect to them, to the elders who have died of them in the past and do so now in the present, and to their young adults, the elders of the future. I give respect and assurance of my support for all that they are standing for. It's the beginning of Reconciliation Week 2021. Established in 1996, when the Reconciliation Movement was flourishing, it was two years later that Millinder Council held a gay or a meeting at which an apology and a memorandum of understanding were presented to the uh, Wurundjeri elder Ian Hunter. The Millinder Reconciliation Group began at this time and we have been working closely together with the Council ever since. We worked with Council on their Charter for Reconciliation in 2003. In 2004, Council began to fly the Aboriginal flag each day as a statement of intention for reconciliation. The theme for rec reconciliation this year is more than words. Reconciliation takes action. Firstly, let us notice how Wurundjeri people like to be referred to. No longer is Aboriginal deemed appropriate, as Auntie Gail, uh, one of our uh, Wurundjeri consultants at the council said, it's what the white people call it. 
their identity now is as First Nations, First Peoples. This makes their place in our Australian nation very clear. They were here first, and that fact underpins the truth of our history. Hidden in that first is the invasion, the settlement, the dispossession, the stolen children, the loss of language, of cultural practice, of vast knowledge of country, of clan and family. Truth, which we need to know, and which will be very painful for them to tell. First Nation people are actively moving towards truth and treaty. Victorian First Peoples Assembly has been established by election from Aboriginal communities across Victoria. It will work to identify what the treaty will look like. They will not be negotiating it, they are setting the terms. It has the support of the Victorian Government, which sealed the Commission in legislation in 2018. The Assembly has now established the Europe Justice Commission, with six commissioners who have responsibility for investigating historical and ongoing injustices suffered by First Nations people. This follows the recognition that there can be no treaty without the truth of the history which a treaty must deal with. The Commission will make their report by 2024. But the First Nations of Victoria cannot do reconciliation alone. Reconciliation is an issue that white Australia must solve. It is for us to a meeting today by agreement to take on our reconciliation responsibility. We have a huge task and I urge you not to stand back and think it's all being done by the Aboriginal people. That puts you in the position of the white invaders those who refuse the Aboriginal people recognition, humanity and rights. Take on the name First People, First Nation. Hear that first and know what it means and all that it implies for the truth and then for treaty. Share your understanding of this. Spread the word. Two flags will hang together here today. They are symbolic of our walk together, the First Peoples and all of us other Australians. It is how we stand in relation to each other that really matters. Knowing what you understand by First is your responsibility. Knowing that can lead you to know reconciliation as more than a word. Thanks, Jan. So, so now Jan and I will embrace uh, the First Nation and uh, the Australian flag together.
So thank you so much once again, Jim. Thank you all for attending and putting online online this morning. Thank you.